Okay, welcome to the Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform Committee's 23rd meeting of 2019. Before we move to the first item on the agenda, can I remind everyone to switch their mobile phones off or on silent as they'll uh, affect the broadcasting system. We've got apologies today from John Scott, MSP, and Claudia Beamish, MSP. Um, the first item on the agenda is for the committee to decide whether it's going to take item... Uh, Agenda items three and four in private, and for all future consideration of its approach to the proposed deposit return scheme to be taken in private. Are we agreed? agreed. Thank you. The second item in the agenda is to consider a proposal by the Scottish Government to consent to the UK Government legislating using the powers under the Act in relation to the following UK statutory instrument proposals. The first one is Persistent Organic Pollutants Regulations 2019, the REACH. Um, EU exit regulations 2019, the trade in animals and animal products, uh, legislative functions and veterinary surgeons amendment of the EU exit regulations 2019, and the import of and trade in animals and animal products uh, amendment for the EU exit regulations to 2019. So my members will remember and they'll note that the REACH SI was inadvertently made by the UK Minister of State before the Scottish Parliament had agreed to Scottish Minister's consent and members will know that I wrote on behalf of the committee to express our dismay at such a, an oversight. And Dr Coffey, the DEFRA Minister, has written to the committee to apologise for this and has set out some additional procedures which should prevent such a situation happening again. She has also asked that the committee on this occasion uh, agree its consent retrospectively to avoid the need to, to revoke and relay this SI and I have agreed that the committee will consider the SI retrospectively. But I also think that it might be helpful as part of our long-term planning around EU exit to develop our links with DEFRA, especially at official and clerk level. And I hope this means that that kind of situation can be avoided in the future. So we've already agreed to develop our links with our counterpart committees. And I see this as a complementary and constructive approach to our future working arrangements, particularly at this time. Uh, the possibility of Brexit. I've asked the clerks to include something along these lines in a future work programme paper. So now, um, returning to the SIs that we've got in front of us, are there any comments in relation to the, the instruments? Mark. Yeah, thanks, convener. Um, I don't have any uh, concerns in relation to uh, the statutory instruments, apart from the REACH statutory instrument that's being proposed. Um, as I've made clear with uh, previous instruments uh, uh, concerning REACH that have been brought to this committee, I think there is a, a potential for significant divergence between the UK regulatory system and the EU regulatory system. And I think you know, that, that could be very problematic going forward. In particular, uh, the EU system uh, has a set of uh, expert committees that involve public health uh, experts, NGOs, unions, industry, in the decision-making process around whether chemicals are safe to be used in our society or not. Yet the UK government has chosen uh, not to replicate that committee structure within the replacement regulations at UK level. And I think that that is a, a major concern. As I said, I've raised this before. Um, it's disappointing that uh, with these amendments that are being brought forward, the UK government has you know, not decided to reflect on that issue and to try and address it. Um, and I think it's particularly concerning given that the HSC, the Health and Safety Executive, who will now be maintaining the, the regulatory function here, uh, clearly don't have the level of public health expertise that we see uh, with the organisations that are involved in decision making uh, with the EU REACH regulations. Um, I'm also concerned about divergence over time. So. The head of the health and safety executive has said recently that in the event of an no-deal Brexit, he expects divergence from day one. I think that should concern us as a committee. Um, but my second concern is really about the process. And I think, as you've outlined, convener, you know, we've had a letter uh, from Therese Coffey. Um, I, I'm not content with that. Um, I think, ideally, we would seek DEFRA to come up here and explain the issues about why um, you know, they've chosen to bypass um, this parliament in their decision making. Um, whether we do that now, whether we do that at a later uh, point in time, um, I'll be guided by you on that. But I, I think 
right now I have serious concerns about the policy that's in these statutory instruments and also about the way that this parliament and this committee has been treated. Yeah, so they have made the offer to come to speak to us about this, but I think that you suggest time is of the essence at the same time, but everything that you have discussed there, the concerns that you've discussed there are around the development of the frameworks. Now, we, uh, hopefully by what I said earlier about these closer links with the uh, DEFRA and the, our counterpart committees down there as this pol a policy and frameworks develop, we will have time to scrutinise and we will make sure that we absolutely do that. Are you content at the moment to sort of like, we have had um, the Scottish Government have said that they are broadly content to, to accept this SI. Are you content for maybe the committee to have somebody from the Scottish Government to come to us and explain why they are broadly content so we can look at the, that kind of detail and make a decision that we absolutely we should have DEFRA in front of us as soon as possible to talk about the frameworks, but also to address the process issue that, that we're all concerned about. Would that be something that you want to do? Angus, you wanted to say something as well, and I'll come to Stuart Stevenson. Yeah, uh, thanks, convener. Um, I certainly take on board uh, uh, most of what uh, Mark Russell has, has, has said, um, but uh, at the outset, can I just say that uh, I was pleased to see that officials have, have worked with DEFRA uh, to ensure that uh, the drafting delivers for uh, our interests and, and respects devolved competence in Scotland. But um, I think, uh, you know, there's, there's still work to do and, and it would be good to get uh, a Scottish Government official uh, and DEFRA in front of us at some point. But can I also say it's well, at some point very soon. Um, can I also say, though, that it's disappointing to note that uh, uh, stakeholders are likely to have um, increased costs, um, who, particularly when they have to re-register substances in the UK REACH regime, uh, having already uh, paid out to be part of the EU REACH regime. So um, I would be particularly keen to uh, explore whether charges could be waived, for example, given that the uh, stakeholders, it's, it's not the stakeholders' fault that they're in this position. Um, so that's something that I think we should explore with DEFRA when they're in front of us um, and, and make the strong point that the uh, stakeholders shouldn't be penalised for a, a situation not of their making. Okay, Stuart. Uh, thank you, convener. Um, I, I think it's uh, useful that we take steps to establish good relationships with DEFRA. I'm confident in my own mind, based on not very much evidence, uh, that this is not malice, this is accident. Um, the, the civil servants generally uh, are under immense pressure, as we know at the moment, as indeed, for that matter, are ministers who, who cannot be master of the details. So, so I don't think this is a, a witch hunt to find the guilty or whatever. So I, I look to DEFRA appearing here as an opportunity to build, build good continuing a relationship with DEFRA and, uh, and indeed through that, the, the, the ministers. However, I, I very much pick up what Angus MacDonald has said, um, that where uh, an order has been laid that will have financial implications for uh, businesses in Scotland, I think it is a particularly serious uh, breach of proper process. And of course, the costs lie in two ways. First of all, there are charges that will be levied uh, by government, and they have the discretion to choose not to do so. And I very much align myself with Angus um, MacDonald's suggestion. But equally, of course, there are um, significant investments of time and effort that companies will need to make, which is which in many ways is, a, is almost a more serious thing. And it's more difficult to deal with, to be blunt. And I, and I simply wonder to what extent uh, uh, businesses in Scotland have perhaps been denied some of the opportunities they should have had, although we know we've heard uh, from businesses uh, on this uh, uh, in the way it's been handled. But the bottom line is we've got to kind of got to put it behind us and, and build good relationships for the future. And I will certainly try and be part of doing that. Thank okay. you. Anyone else want to make any comments? So we, I'm guessing that um, we should defer consideration for these SIs until we have 
a Scottish government official to yeah. the reach one. Sorry, the, so the, the the three others are we content not to make any recommendations in regards to the ones except reach. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, but the REACH one, we will defer our consideration of that until the 17th of September, and we will write to Scottish Government to ask for an official to come in front of us to actually go through. It could, could I just be quite clear what the implications of our doing that are? It seems to me, since we're considering it post hoc, there are no implications in deferring our consideration, but I'd like to hear it put on the record if yes. that is in fact no, the case. We, we've already uh, discussed that there won't be any implications. We've got time, we've got that week. We're, the committee's not sitting next week, but sitting the next week, and in that bit, it has to be happen, be considered on that week, the 17th of September. So there's, that doesn't have any implications at all. Yeah, so we're content to do that. So we'll write to the Scottish Government and ask for an official um, to come through and speak to us about why the Scottish Government are content, answer some of those questions. But any broader, any, um, any more detailed points about the frameworks that are going to be in place for the replacement for REACH will be something we'll do as part of our ongoing scrutiny of uh, the common frameworks. Um, yep, yeah. okay, thank you. So. Um, this concludes the committee's meet, uh, business in public today. At its next meeting on the 17th of September, the committee will hear evidence from stakeholders in relation to its biodiversity inquiry. And we'll now move into private session and ask that the public gallery be cleared as the public part of the meeting is now closed. <laughs>